Hello students, I am your primary science teacher. I hope you all are following the instructions to keep yourself safe and healthy. Students, today we are going to learn something interesting about plants. We all know that plants are our green friends. They are very helpful to us. When we walk in a garden, we observe that small saplings growing under the tree. One question always arises in our mind. From where do these saplings come? Students, do you know? They are actually the baby plant of a tree. And the process of production of baby plant from a parent plant is known as reproduction. Reproduction is a combination of two words that is re and production. Re means again and production means to produce something. When again and again anything is produced, it is known as reproduction. So, I think you all understand the meaning of reproduction. Let's elaborate this with the help of a chapter of your science book. Reproduction in Flowering Plants and Plant Growth, Chapter 2. Reproduction in plants means the growing of new plants from the old ones. Like all other living things, plants too increase their number through reproduction. Plants produce young ones like themselves during their lifetime so that their species may not die out. Different plants adopt different methods of reproduction. So let us study about these different methods of reproduction in plants. Plants generally reproduce in two main ways, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, plants produce with the help of their flowers. And in asexual reproduction, plants reproduce from their vegetative parts like roots, stems and leaves. These plants are able to grow without seeds. Now we are going to learn about asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is of two types, natural vegetative propagation and artificial vegetative propagation. Here I am using one word, propagation. It means increasing in number that is similar to reproduction. Let's learn about natural vegetative propagation or reproduction. As the name make it clear, it occurs naturally. Now the first one is natural reproduction by roots. Some plants like sweet potato, carrot, radish, turnip, store food in their roots and you are using them in your salad to make it healthy. I think you are using it. Roots of these plants develop buds that can grow into new plant as you can see in this picture. Now the next one is reproduction by stem. Have you observed the potato or ginger? Carefully, it has small black dots known as birds or eye. When an eye or bird is planted into soil, it grows into a new plant. They are actually underground stem. There is a stem, store food in them and grow into a new plant through their birds. The next one is reproduction by leaves. Some leaves like bryophyllum grows from their leaves. A bryophyllum leaf have notches as you can see in this picture. Notches are birds that germinate into new plants. So one leaf of a bryophyllum plant give rise to many new plants if it gets soil and moisture. So students, these are the three types of natural vegetative propagation. Now, the reproduction through artificial vegetative propagation. It is a type of plant reproduction that involves humans. 
The first one is stem cutting. For cutting, a healthy young branch with a node is being selected. First, we select a healthy branch, as you can observe in this picture. Then, the piece of branch with less number of leaves is stuck into some good moist soil. After a few days, the cutting grows into a new plant. This method is used to propagate plants like rose, sugarcane and pineapple. The next one is layering. In this method, a lower branch of a plant is bent down close to the ground as you can see in this picture and covered with moist soil in such a way that its growing tip remains above the soil surface. After a few days, the covered portion of the stem usually produces roots. The rooted branch is then cut and grown as an independent plant. This method is used to propagate plants such as jasmine. The next one is grafting. The art of joining parts of two plants in such a way that they grow as one plant is called grafting. For grafting, select a plant and then detach a twig or bud from it. This twig is called scion, as you can see in this picture. The scion is then kept over the cut stem of another plant. This is called stalk. And it has an extensive root system under the soil. The two cut surfaces are bound together and the joint is covered with wax to prevent evaporation and also to stop infection. The tissue of this stalk and sign join together to form one plant. This method helps to combine desirable features of two plants, mango, rubber, apple, pear, and guava are propagated through this method. So students, now you all understand how the asexual reproduction done in a plant. Now the importance of hesitative propagation. It helps to retain the desirable characteristics of a mother plant. It helps to increase the number of plants and sort in the bearing age of plants. Vegetative propagation prevents the species from being lost and it also helps to produce superior strengths and disease resistant plants. Now, the most important sexual reproduction in plants. Majority of flower plants reproduce sexually and the flower is the reproductive part of a plant. A complete flower consists four parts. The first one is the sepals. It is also known as calyx. It is the green part of the flower and it protects the flower when it opens. The next one is the corolla or petals. This is the second important part. It is the colorful part of the flower which attract insects for the pollination. The third one is the male reproductive part. Male reproductive part is known as stamen. Stamen consists two parts, anther and filament. Anther produces pollens and filament give it a support. The next important part is Pestil. Pestil is the female reproductive part. It consists stigma, style, ovary and ovule. Stigma is the topmost part of a flower that catches pollen grains. Style is the long tube which connects stigma to the ovary. An ovary, it contains small eggs that are called ovules. After fertilization, 
ovary becomes the fruit and the ovules grows into a seed a flower may consist of either stamen or pistil or both based on this a flower is of two types either it is unisexual or it is bisexual rose china rose composed of all four parts so they are known as bisexual flower whereas papaya cucumber composed either male reproductive part or female reproductive part so they are known as unisexual flower as i have told you that anther contains pollens the transfer of pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma is known as pollination depending upon the transfer of pollen grains pollination can be classified into two types the first one is self pollination when pollen grains transferred from anther to the stigma of a same flower or another flower of the same plant it is called self pollination another one is cross pollination when pollen grains transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same kind it is known as cross pollination after pollination pollen grains fuse with the egg and form seeds thank you students i will meet you again in our next video till then stay home stay safe